Hi everyone, Carol here from Oak House Journals. It's now um, three o'clock in the afternoon <laughs> and I've been trying to record this video all morning. I've lost my day, um, but I did promise I would try and do a video of this um, window envelope, lace window envelope that um, I included in my friendship journal page for Alison. That was my last YouTube video. I think it was entitled um, Friendship, Friendship Journal Page and Quick Tutorial. But in any case, I'll put the link down below so that you can have a look at it because this isn't the actual one I made. Obviously, the original one went inside the Friendship Journal page and has obviously gone off to Alison. So this is one... Um, well, this is one of a production line of these that I've made for this tutorial. And the tutorials um, specifically for you, Paula, because you, you asked for it. Um, but what I would say to any of my new subscribers or any of my long-standing subscribers, or shall I say long-suffering subscribers, please don't ever be afraid to ask if you're curious about something or um, have a question. Please just email me um, through the email address in the description box down below underneath the video or through Etsy conversation um, because I'm more than happy to answer any questions or share any information if I if I know what the answer is obviously but no I'm I'm more than happy to um, to share any any details so please just just ask away right so um as I said this was um, an envelope that I included inside the friendship journal page um, it's really, really simple. I can't give you the um, specific dimensions of the envelope, but you don't really need them. You can make this um, to fit any any size. Sorry, you can make it to fit any size journal page, um, or you can just make any um, size envelope. It really doesn't matter. Um, and the reason I say that is because the envelope that I included in the Friendship Journal page was one that Alison had given me originally. It was a lovely cream coloured envelope and I wanted to use it and include it in her Friendship Journal page because inside the um, inside paper, the decoration was just um, lovely and I wanted to showcase that. Um, and the other thing is that the journal page that I made was dependent upon the size of the two scraps of vintage indenture paper that I had. I, I, I had to make a journal, um, friendship journal page that would fit those two scraps. Um, so I can't even tell you what size that friendship journal page was now that it's it's gone off to Alison. But for the purposes of making this one, let me show you. Um, so what I've used, I've used these Paper Chase um, DL envelopes. They're 220 millimetres by 110 millimetres and they're 100 GSM um, envelopes. And the reason I like using these, apart from the fact that they're 100 GSM, which means they're quite thick to work with or a good not thick but a good weight to work with they're not flimsy envelopes but they've got these squared off flaps and I have to say I'm not a pointy uh, flap envelope kind of girl I love straight flaps on my envelopes um, but that doesn't mean to say if you've only got pointy envelopes um, sorry pointy flaps on your envelopes you can still use those we'll just you just cut cut them off um, to square them off a little bit and you'll get a little bit of a bevel on either side a bit like this one really so you can equally use those um, and it doesn't matter whether they're self moisten or self sealing or whatever um, it doesn't really matter at all um, because you'll be covering that bit up anyway you don't even need to use a new envelope by any means. You could use, um, say, an old window envelope or a business envelope that's come um, through the post because when you create this window, it's going to be a lot bigger than the little windows uh, that you get in business envelopes. But you can, you can even dispense with any sort of envelope at all. Um, and I'll show you why in just one second. So basically, you can use any size envelope. The only thing um, 
or piece of paper the only thing that it will need to be is bigger than your friendship journal page now um, this is just a scrap of paper that um, I had to hand and this is what I'm going to be using to demonstrate as my friendship journal page if you want to put your envelope inside your friendship journal page or even just stitch it into a signature inside um, your journal then your envelope needs to be bigger than um, your sorry doesn't need to be a lot bigger than your friendship journal page it, it depends if you want your envelope a lot smaller then that's fine it's not a problem um, if you want it like mine was in the one I made for Alison it was exactly the size of the friendship um, journal page and all I did was let's get a, a pencil all I did was I took my envelope I measured it up against my friendship journal page I did a mark at the top mark at the bottom and chopped those two bits off now if you've got any sense you will <laughs> move it up so that you're just chopping a little bit off the bottom and you've got oh sorry I'm out of frame here you'll just chop a little bit off the bottom and leave the bulk at the top to be chopped off and that way you can use that part of the the envelope um, when I did mine um, what I actually did was I just moved it halfway chopped a bit off top and bottom so when you've done that say that's your envelope you've chopped off the bit at the top and the bottom this is what you're left with and when I flip it over you can see why you actually physically do not need to have an envelope you can actually use a piece of paper and just do two folds to create an envelope shape because effectively what you're doing by chopping off each end of your um, envelope is deconstructing your envelope and for beginners that might not be aware of this when you put an envelope into the center of a signature then effectively what you're doing when you deconstruct your envelope is you're stitching this edge into the crease or the center of your journal so for example imagine that this is your um, your journal you've opened it up to the center your envelope would be in there like so and you would just do your three hole pamphlet stitch or five hole pamphlet stitch down that center spine and then you would just glue along this edge and this edge down here not the flap and you would just close up your envelope let the glue stick and then you have this in the middle and your stitching is all hidden and that's exactly what I did for the friendship journal page exactly that nothing nothing different but having made these you don't actually need to put them um, inside a journal by stitching them in you could just slot them slot them in or you could just give them a give them away as happy mail or something um, something like that I'm just going to um, raise you up a little bit because I keep on getting out focus so I hope that's going to be a little bit better there we go and I'll move across slightly there we go all hunky-dory now so um, the only consideration that um, you need to have with regards to your envelope really is the width if you are going to do what I did here which is put one of these on the back now one of those is um, and for those of you who haven't seen them is one of these Sizzix thinlet dies by um, Ranger it was designed by Tim Holtz and it is um, a die which effectively has little slats in it so that's what it looks like when it's cut out it's a two-part die actually so that's the main part and then the second part is this bit which is another um, bit that you cut out and stick on the bottom down there so the only consideration is that your envelope needs to be wide enough to take 
this die on the back if you're making one like I've made mine here. Now, I don't mind that you could put that there very close to that fold and have your flap nowhere near it so that it, it, this piece of your die cut doesn't go underneath the flat now, flap. Now, I don't do that. I don't mind that it's partially underneath there. The reason being is that I want to give quite a reasonable bit of clearance here because if you are going to be sewing this into a journal, you just want a reasonable clearance away from that centre fold um, so that when you come to stitch it in, you're not going to be catching catching this. Okay, so um, that's that. Let's move that to one side and so as I say yeah all you need to do is make sure that in terms of width you've got plenty of clearance here the other thing I would say to you is when I use the envelope that Alison gave to me there wasn't this much well I just show you there wasn't that much of a gap between this bit of the envelope and the beginning of the crease so, um, what I found when I've been making this one, and if I hold it up, you can see that that is the back of the envelope, and the bit above it, just slightly above there, is the back of the envelope and the flap. Now, I didn't get that when I made the first one for Alison, but that's what's happening with these. Now, there is a way around that, that you could actually cover, put an extra piece of paper in there that will come closer to this edge here, the crease for the flap. Um, but I'm not that bothered about it, so I haven't done that, but that's just something to make you aware of. Okay, so the first thing you do after you've um, chopped the top and the bottom off your envelope or created your piece of paper to make sure it's the, the size you want and will fit inside your friendship journal page. The th first thing you do then is to cover it. Now to cover mine, this is one that I've just covered and as I say I've very much got a Blue Peter style tutorial going on on here um, so I've got a bit of a production line all to, all to one side of me here with various stages. So the first thing I did was I covered it over with a piece um, or some of this, again, Tim Holtz Ideology collage paper. And this is the botanical one. Now this tissue paper is fabulous stuff. It's a little bit more um, uh, durable, shall I say, or tougher than... Um, normal bog standard tissue paper that you wrap things in but that being said you don't have to cover it in um, this stuff what you could do is get a piece of uh, wrapping tissue paper put it through your printer and print it with any design you want just by adhering the tissue paper to a piece of acetate and then feeding it through your printer so you could print any design on it um, the reason I chose this is because I had some in my stash. I love it. You can paint it. You can put it on fabric. You can do all sorts with it. So it's really versatile. Another thing you could do is if you have, if your en envelope is not white, if it's a patterned envelope, you could leave the pattern and dispense with this stage altogether. The other option is you could decoupage um, a napkin onto here or um, I have this little pack of um, hankies you could do exactly the same with these these are the same as napkins you just peel the layers away and use the top decorative layer and you could um, decoupage that onto your page um, or onto your envelope um, what I glued it with normally I would glue with Ranger Multimap Medium because um, as I've said before, that is my glue of preference when I'm doing collaging. Um, I ran out of that a time ago and I'm now on Art Basics um, soft gel medium. And I am really on my uppers with regards to that as well. I've done so much collaging and um, these <laughs> that I've, I've almost emptied my pot out. 
But what I did find, um, and what I have seen other people use, is glue sticks. Um, now, I'm not a great big fan of glue sticks. Um, I'm not quite so trusting as to their durability. But I was getting so low on my glue last night that I actually resorted to using a glue stick. And I have no idea where this one came from. It's called Banner. Um, it's not even a Yoohoo make. Um, I have no idea where this came from. But I have to say I was very impressed when I came to gluing tissue onto tissue. Um, it was very, very forgiving, whereas some glues, um, even the Ranger Matte Medium and the Art Basics um, Soft Medium Gel, they can be a little bit too wet, but this stuff was amazing. So I was quite impressed with that. So I'll certainly be doing um, a lot more um, pieces using this to see how it, how it goes. Okay, so I glued my tissue paper on. Now, as you can probably see, there are parts where, if I can maybe pick it up on the camera, yeah, you're probably picking up a little bit here, where there are like little air bubbles. There's no wrinkles, but I have a little bit of movement where the um, uh, tissue hasn't stuck down. Now, for two reasons, I'm not bothered about that, because when I come to put my next layer on top of that, if I use enough, it will soak into this tissue paper and stick it down. Or, or and, the other reason is that if it doesn't, I quite like that movement. It gives me a little bit of a, um, uh, what shall I say, almost like a quilted or a puffy effect to my envelope, which I quite like. So I'm not, I'm not bothered about that. I'm also not too bothered if it hasn't quite gone all the way to the edge. And that's obviously for the first reason that I said, because the next time round it, it will soak through. Okay, so first layer, your, your decorative layer. The next layer that I did, oh, by the way, I should say that in between each layer, I trim off the excess of my tissue paper. The reason being for that is that it helps me see a defined edge when I've put my next layer on and want to trim it off. Because you can imagine by the time you get to your third layer, you're not going to be quite sure where that edge is to get a, a good finish or a good, a good edge. And the other thing is that I make sure between each of my layers that my glue is absolutely dry and then I burnish the creases with my bone folder and I do it on both sides, um, on both creases. Make sure please that um, your glue is absolutely dry because if it isn't, then your bone folder will move the tissue paper and it will probably snag it and rip it. Um, but that way, again, it makes sure that my creases stay nice and crisp for my envelopes. So going on to the next stage, here I have covered my first piece with some pattern paper. And this is just bog standard sewing pattern paper. This is from an old sewing pattern that I had. And all I did was um, I chose a couple of pieces, laid it on the top and um, glued it down. And as you can see, I haven't trimmed it here. Um, the quick and easy way I have found to trim my edges is that you can quite happily get a pair of scissors and cut along your edge here. But what I found, and that's the joy with these square um, envelopes, is if I get out my trusty uh, guillotine, what I found is if I just do that, you've got a nice clean edge on the whole length of your edge, which is ideal. And then you can just chop that again on the guillotine and again on this side if you've got an overlap. So the one couple of things I should mention at this stage, on a sewing pattern, you will get one side, which is the true side of your sewing pattern. And that is the right side of the sewing pattern. And the lines and the information on the sewing pattern are um, much darker. And the finish is slightly shiny. Whereas on the reverse side, the pattern lines are a lot fainter and it's a matte finish. 
Now, depending on your preference, um, depends on which way you put your paper onto um, your envelope. Now, I chose with mine to use the reverse side because I wanted a more subtle image. Now, here I have used the correct side and it's more noticeable. It's not a problem at all because um, you're going to be, if you want to, that is, you're going to be putting another layer on, on here. And you'll see in another one of the examples, I've married both. On some, on one side of the envelope, I've done the reverse side of the pattern paper. And on the other side uh, of the envelope, I've, I've done the top side of the pattern paper. Okay, so that's what it looks like when you've got your second piece on there. And the reason I've got this bit here and this bit here that I haven't chopped off is because I'm only human and... <laughs> because of this. Now, when, as I said, when I got my original envelope from Alison, I wanted to showcase the pattern paper that was inside the envelope because it was, it was just beautiful scroll work. Obviously, with these envelopes from Paper Chase, they're bog standard white envelopes um, and white is what you're gonna get on the reverse. So, you've got various options, you can, line the inside of the envelope like I was planning to do with more tissue paper. You could put a piece of decorative paper behind your window um, and do it that way. You could um, ink your inside of your envelope or you could even stencil the inside of your envelope. There's a million and one things you could do. Um, it also depends on your piece of lace. My piece of lace um, is off-white and against white it would have just disappeared completely. So what I decided to do was I decided that I would back um, what I thought was the side um, inside of the envelope, the piece that would be backing the piece of lace. And because I'm only human, I backed the wrong side. I should have been backing, let me just put that bit out of the way, I should have been backing that piece. I didn't plan to um, use tissue paper on completely on the inside of the envelope, even though I did have a big enough piece. Um, I was just doing the bit that I thought would be appropriate. But if you remember from this envelope, the bit with the flap is on this side. And then when you flip it over, the bit where the window is cut out is this side. So I backed that bit and I should have backed that bit in essence. That's basically what I'm trying to say. So that's just something to make you aware of if you are planning just to back one piece inside the envelope. This is the bit you need to back, not the bit that's attached to the, sh the flap. Okay, so... Moving swiftly on, this is what the envelope looks like when you have put a second layer of tissue paper onto the envelope. So that's what the first, that's what it looks like if you've only got one layer on and this is what it looks like if you've got two layers of tissue paper on. Now Either of those are more than acceptable, but for the purposes of the Friendship Journal page I made for Alison, I needed to mute this down um, more to keep it in keeping with the um, Friendship Journal page. So I put another layer on top. So this is how it looks when you've got a second layer on top. And as you can see here, this is this panel here is where I've used the pattern paper with the right side facing up and this piece here which is a lot more muted compared to the writing down here this is where I've used the reverse of the pattern paper so that's just something to point out to you the other thing I need to mention to you is if you are going to have writing like this Beware of your orientation of your envelope because when I close this envelope up, that is going to be the right way up. 
in my um, in my journal and that will mean that when I put this on top it can form part of my decoration so you just need to be aware of of that as well so having put my second layer on here I put a, a layer of tissue paper inside um, as you can see I've got a slight crease here it's very smooth because I've used my bone folder to smooth it out um, but I have got a crease there now I'm not particularly bothered with that it's not going to be noticeable behind my lace but um, be, be warned you might get creases and here I've done a slight overlap because I didn't use one whole piece um, but again this is really smooth and it's not going to be a problem um, when I uh, stitch my uh, envelope into my signature okay so then the next thing I did was I just stitched all the way round it um, with a single straight stitch on my sewing machine now you can do it in a contrasting thread um, as you can see I just chose to do it in thread that will complement I'm picking that up thread that will complement my page I I'm a little bit OCD I can't quite go there with the the contrasting threads yet or the dark threads but I will get there I will get there um, also because these envelopes are quite busy um, I've just gone for a very plain straight stitch but you'll see on some of the other pieces that I've done um, and in fact on this one I've done a little bit of um, I call it messy stitching and wonky stitching just to add some some interest um, it's entirely up to you the only thing I would say to you is have the right side of your envelope uppermost when you're stitching it on your machine that's if you decide you want to stitch it because obviously these are glued you don't have to stitch them I just included stitching because I liked um, I like that look so stitch with the uppermost side of your envelope or the right side of your envelope uppermost um, the reason for that is you'll end up with the nicer um, stitching on the front of your envelope and the the duff stitching or the not so nice stitching will be on the inside um, the other thing I that I always do when I stitch is that after I've stitched I take my bone folder and I follow my line of stitching and I just burnish over the top like I would with a crease all the way round sometimes I do it several times and press it down like so the reason being it gives you a nicer finish on the reverse um, so for example if you were doing a tag and your stitching was going to show it gives a nicer finish on the reverse of your tag but the other thing is when you come to glue the envelope together um, it also means that you've got a better adhesion between the two surfaces because your stitching is flattened um, and as you know we will be gluing along this edge and along this edge in due course so by doing that it gives you a much nicer um, and smoother finish okay as I said I wait for each layer to dry I trim each layer off I burnish each layer and then I stitched it now if you want to get a really nice smooth and flattened envelope like this there are several ways that you can do that you can obviously put it under a pile of books to flatten it out overnight you can put it between your plates um, on your die cutting machine and roller it through obviously with, with no dies in the machine um, and roller it through and that will flatten it out or the other thing you can do which is what I did last night I had some ironing to do I just put this on my ironing board sandwiched it between um, two pieces of cloth they were actually tea towels that I needed to iron and I just ironed over the over the top and that will give you a really nice flattened envelope okay the next thing I did was to um, where are we sort out my lace now I had a strip of a very small strip 
of this lovely vintage lace and this is all I've got left of it but it is genuine well it's antique actually it's not vintage but as you can see it's going in holes and it's very much on its last legs this is the worst of the pieces but I wanted to use the pieces um, I wanted to give Alison a piece because I know she likes vintage and that's why I used it on um, on her friendship journal page but the other reason was I did say I'd do a tutorial on this so I thought well I might as well use up the the rest of the lace and the way I did it was to cut off a portion of the lace and I sandwiched it inside a cello bag, a cellophane bag, one of these bags. Now, when I made my friendship, um, let me show you what they are, actually. Have I got one? Ooh, did I get them out? Yes, I did. Here we go. Sorry, not as organised as I thought. Um, when I made the one for Alison, um, I had recently bought a birthday card and I used the cello bag that the birthday card came in. Um, so you can very easily repurpose um, cellophane bags. Um, if you don't have those, you can use brand new ones. And this is a pack that I got from Hobbycraft. It contains 100 of A6 size greeting card bags. Um, and you can equally use one of those, which is what, what this is. Um, you can use any sort of packaging to create your window. You could use tracing paper if you wanted kind of like an opaque look that... Um, you get with this sort of packaging. I know this isn't tracing paper, but it, it, it looks similar to tracing paper. So you could use tracing paper. There is nothing to stop you using something like this. These are plastic wallets that um, I'm not even sure what came in them. Um, but these equally would be good to, to use. You can use um, acetate, either bought acetate um, or packaging. The only thing I would say with um, acetate is not too thick because remember that you are sandwiching your lace between two layers and if your acetate is too thick then two layers of acetate plus the covered paper that um, forms your envelope might be a bit of a challenge for your sewing machine. Now it's not a challenge, I've, I've got a bog standard genome sewing machine and my goodness she is so robust, she has taken everything, literally everything I've thrown at her and she worked really well but I don't know what you've got at home or whether you've got an old machine or whatever so I'm only mentioning that, um, that if you're going to use acetate um, use thinner acetate um, depending on whether or not you feel your machine will, will cope with it or not. Um, the other reason for not using really thick acetate is because otherwise you're going to end up with a really rigid envelope inside your uh, your journal. So um, I think it's nicer to use a thinner acetate or something like this, a cello bag. Now um, I'm not going to um, go down the option of using acetate. It's basically the same principle as using um, a cello bag. Um, I'm just going to show you how I have used a cello bag for creating this one. So what I, what I did was I found a cellophane bag that was going to be big enough to create, um, to be my... Um, window envelope um, and as you can see this one is amply big enough it's probably half a centimeter on three sides and a good oh, two three centimeters on on this side so I've got plenty of room to play with now rather than cut it to fit the size of um, window what I suggest you do, and this is where it's a little bit difficult for me to give you specific measurements because I don't know the size of the envelope you're making and I don't know what you're trapping in here, the size of your piece of lace 
or it might be a butterfly or a flower or oh you could you could trap anything some some dry flowers in here you could do anything the world's your oyster um so i don't know what size you need or want your window to be as you can see i've made a big window here um because i had a, a fairly big size piece of lace what i would suggest you do though is that you maneuver your lace so that or whatever you're going to put inside and this is a little bit fiddly just maneuver your lace so that you have and that's a little bit too far over you have probably about a centimeter at least on two sides now if your cello bag is as big as mine here you've got more than a centimeter down below here and the reason I say to do that is because when you when you go to put it inside your envelope I would suggest you glue and affix it on two sides now I think it might be a little bit easier if I go to my next template, if I can find it. Yeah, here it is. Just to show you what I've done. So there's my piece of lace and I've actually got it um, partially glued in place. As you can see, it's loose here. So I took my piece of um, my cellophane and I glued it along the top edge and the side edge here I didn't attach this bottom edge and this edge which is this edge here flip that over so I glued this edge I glued this edge and as you can see my lace is moving around all over the place because this bag is is big um, and it will want to to move so what I did was I glued this piece and glued this piece and I just use um, oh it's on the other side of the room art glitter glue just put a, a very very fine bead of glue to um, secure those two edges and then this edge here which is the big overlap I trimmed it down so that I had um, about half a centimeter inside the window aperture that I've cut and when I did that it obviously meant that it's like that when you trim off the bottom portion as well and the reason for doing that is so that just before I sew it I can position it my lace exactly where I want it then get my art glitter glue again and just put a small bead to secure this top piece down and then your lace is trapped in there and won't move now I really hope that made sense to you <laughs> um, the one thing I would say is when you put your um, glue in place you'd want to stay away from the inside of your frame and I will explain um, how I cut that in, the, in a moment um, because you don't want your glue oozing out onto your cellophane because um, unless you get to it quick it will leave a, a mark on your cellophane and the idea is obviously not to have marks on our windows so what I suggest you do is just do a tiny bead and then what I tend to do is either with my finger is spread the glue which should be very thin less is more remember on for this certainly is spread it away from the window aperture all the way around with my finger or just with your um, bone folder let me show you what I mean if you just bear with me one second and I will get my art glitter glue okay so what I mean there is I'm just going to position my lace where I want it make sure it's nice and centered just hold it in place with my fingers and you'll see I'm not going anywhere near the frame 
aperture I'm just putting a thin bead of glue down there. I'm smoothing down my acetate or my cello and I'm just using my finger to guide any surplus glue well away from my aperture. And if any seeps out the bottom, just wipe it away with your finger as you go. Okay. And obviously you have this little end here that's open. So again, just raise that up. I hope you can see this. Put the tip of your glue inside and do exactly the same thing. Just tease it away from that window aperture. Now don't worry that it's not closed right next to the aperture. Don't worry about that because you're going to be stitching around that. Okay. So then all you need to do is just run your sewing machine all the way round this window here, stitching on the right side, remember, um, and that will trap with a little bit more security your lace or whatever's inside your cello in place. It's already glued, your lace is not going to move because you've glued it and trapped it in place but the stitching is just another piece of um, decoration to your finished envelope. Okay, so what I need to show you now is cutting the aperture. Now again, it the size of the window depends on what you want to show. As I said before, a big piece of lace means a big window, a tiny piece of lace or um, a butterfly or pressed flowers means a smaller window. Um, so the aperture is entirely up to you. What I would suggest though is that you don't reduce the frame around the window by less than a centimetre. Now, the, you can if you want to. <laughs> you can do what you like. Um, I think in the immortal words of Nick the Booksmith, I'm not your mother, but you can do what you like. Um, the only reason I would say don't reduce it um, less than a centimetre is um, it just makes the the frame or the envelope a little bit um, insecure. Um, and I, if you notice on the one that I made for Alison, I actually did reduce it less than um, a centimetre and I wasn't quite happy with it. What I, Because I've made so many of these um, process line um, envelopes, I wanted something quick and easy that I could easily draw around to mark my aperture um, without having to measure it. You could equally eyeball it. Um, the way to cut this various ways. You can draw around it, poke your scissors into the middle and chop your window out following the line that you've drawn. You could, if you have a rectangle um, die cut, you could put that on and send it through your die cutting machine. Or you can do what I've done here, um, create a template, put it on, draw around it and then all I did was I got a craft knife and um, a metal ruler. I left two paper clips in place on one side and then on the other side um, I put my ruler up against the very very thin piece of cardboard that I've got and I cut it with my craft knife. Um, the reason I didn't do it that way round, metal to metal, which would, would have meant um, 
that it wouldn't have stood so proud is that I actually have this rubberized piece on the back of my um, my ruler. So all I did was I put it down like that and I chopped it. Now um, I don't use a craft knife very often so I found for cutting an aperture like this leaving a little bit of cardboard as a template in place um, was very useful for the simple reason that it's always difficult I find to get a really sharp corner so I find doing it this way if I have a piece of thin cardboard put my ruler on top for the first cut or the first stroke um, or pass if you will I know where the, the start of my line is and I know where the finish is but sometimes you hide it and you can't actually see where it is unless you actually um, made note on your ruler of the specific start and end point. So what I found by doing it this way is that I can actually just move my ruler away. Um, I know where my cut is. I can see where the cardboard is. I can move it back again and go back into place. And I always end up with um, a neat cut always starting in, in exactly the same um, cut line as the first cut that I did. And again, I'm hoping that makes sense. So when I've cut one um, one long side, I put my paper clips back to hold it in place, move the other ones along on the other side, and do that cut, and then take these two away. So they just constantly hold it in place for me like an extra pair of hands. Um, without stating the obvious, Please make sure when you cut your envelope that you haven't got it closed up because if you do, you're going to be cutting through the back and the flap as well. Make sure it's opened out when you do your cutting. Sorry to state the obvious, but mm, these things happen, don't they? And um, yeah, okay, I did it. <laughs> so that's that. Um, so going back to this one, once your aperture is cut out and you've stitched round your lace insert, you're more or less done. All I did then was to put a label on the front and on the back, as I say, I cut out one of the Sizzix um, photo slot dies. With mine, as you can see, I've done several passes round the um, the die cut on my sewing machine because can you see there there is a faux perforated line to mimic stitching and all I did was adjust my uh, length of my stitches on my machine to hit those slots what I also did was I inked my because I use craft card, um, I always think it gives a really nice finish if you ink craft card. And I like to use um, Distress Oxide Vintage Photo. Now, Vintage Photo can be quite a harsh colour if you use the Distressed Ink Pad. But if you use the, excuse me, if you use the um, Distress Oxide, the finish that you get is a lot softer. It's almost like a... Um, not a pastel, but almost like a cappuccino coloured um, colour that comes out of this. It's a, it's a lot nicer. It's a, a little bit milky. Um, so I, get, I think it gives um, a really nice finish. And all I do is just flip round the outside like everybody else does um, to ink their edges. I also think it's nice to ink these, but I don't ink them from the outside. I ink them from the reverse and just run my um, ink pad whoops I've got it upside down no wonder I can't do it through each of the little bars there just so that it picks up some color so I'd go all the way around doing that to get the um, the other side then obviously I just turn it upside down and do it the other way around but as I say I always tend to ink from the reverse um, I just think it just gives a much nicer finish. I've hardly got 
I'm not a great lover of inking, to be honest. That's why I like a very light um, inking on any stuff that I do. Um, and I know this pad is years old. Um, so there's just about enough colour on it for, for what I need. So anyway, that's how I inked my piece. I stitched it. Um, and then I inked on top of that because that softens the stitching as well. It kind of helps it to, to blend in. Um, then what I did was I used some uh, of the tissue paper from the pattern and laid on top of that some German book plate, um, book page. I used a little bit of lace and then I stamped some calico and put that on top. And there actually is a circle underneath with a little bit of red which shows through under that bit of sheer lace um, and that was to pick up the red that was on the friendship journal page um, it, these bits in here in the original i put in um uh, da, 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 some vintage tickets from my stash um, but these pieces in here these are just some ranger ideology ephemera um, from the packs that you can buy. To finish it off, I punched two, uh, four actually, craft circles to match the craft card here. And on these two, I put a dab of glue in the center and glued them onto my flap. And then I went through the usual process using a cropper dial to set in um, an eyelet as you can see so you glue the circle in place first mark the center and then position your crop cropper dial over it punch a hole put your eyelet in the reason that when you glue this on you only put a dab in the middle is so that when you come to tie your um, crochet cotton this part of the disc away from the eyelet will lift up and take the thread really easily. For the other two closures here I completely glued down the circle but what I did first was I glued a vintage shell button onto the circle, pierced a couple of holes using a range of piercing tool which is one of these so I pinched pinched I punched the holes for the button um, through the card that was underneath it and then I stitched some crochet cotton through the holes and through the card then I glued the whole thing onto the envelope so what you have now is that on this one, the card is completely stuck down, but the button actually isn't. The button is, is glued and it is stitched to the piece of card that's stuck down, but you have enough of a lip to be able to thread your thread all the way round, like so. And you can put a bead at the end, I've just chosen to knot it. So under the top one, your thread is under the card, but under the bottom closure, it's under the button. So really simple. And when I can shut it, <laughs> an effective closure. Um, and as I said before, I'm not sure what these are called, whether they're wage um, envelope closures or salary envelope closures. Um, so there we have it. I hope you like um, the envelope. Um, sounds hard to make but actually it isn't it's very 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 straightforward the only thing I would say to you is that the pieces that you cut out of here don't throw them away because so she well I have thrown it away don't know what, oh it's on the other side of the room again I've told you <laughs> as I said I've made so many of these um, videos today oh, I'm losing my mind um, the piece that you chop out of there um, don't throw it away because I used my piece out of there just to make a quick tag with some lace at the bottom these are some Janet Marsh images 
um, a label, some washi, and uh, just a button and some um, seam binding. Or you can, like this piece, this was the original size piece that um, came out of another piece. I'm just going to fold that in half and um, just create a little booklet. Slot that in somewhere in one of my journals. So there we go everybody, thank you so much for, for watching um, and I really hope you've got your fingers crossed for me <laughs> that this is going to upload okay this time. Alright everybody, thanks so much for watching, take care, stay safe, stay well and most of all stay happy. Bye bye now.